Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Jake Adams with Reef Builders and I am at the Butterfly Pavilion to visit my friend Sarah Stevens and she had a very special order of corals from Caribbean last night. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming. Uh, we're excited to show off the coral. Very cool. So it's snowing out here. We're going to go inside and check it out. Lowish lighting. Oh, you already have them on display. Oh, yeah. This is the system. So, this is a super bio, it's like a biosphere system. So, this is on place. Do you want to give us just a brief overview of what's happening in this tank? Yeah, sure. Actually, uh, probably start from the beginning of why you came, uh, got your hands on some Caribbean corals. Yeah, tell us about that. Cool. Um, so this coral came to us through the Florida Reef Track Rescue Project. It's a project where we are working with other zoos and aquariums as well as government agencies to pull healthy coral out of the Caribbean to be kept safe here, um, kind of in the little arc, basically. Because there was a disease? Yeah, so right now there is a really nasty disease that is uh, wiping out coral in the Caribbean. It started north of Miami at Fort St. Lucie in 2014, and since then has pretty much devastated the entire Florida reef track. It's turning out the tourists of Caicos. Uh, it's a really nasty disease that has a mortality rate of 66 to 100% if a coral gets it. So really big deal, really nasty. So coral are being pulled out that are healthy ahead of the disease zone to be kept at zoos and aquariums uh, while scientists figure out what the disease is and how to stop it. And then once the reefs are safe for these coral, they'll be used as restoration coral. You just got these corals in. What is the plan for this tank? Uh, so the plan for this tank is basically to keep these coral healthy and happy for a minimum of three years. At the three year mark, they're going to reassess the program and see if we still need to be keeping them here in human care or if they're ready to go back out onto the reef. Um, are you allowed to pro propagate them on site to any degree? Uh, there's right got to be some protocol for that, right? Yeah, so right now there's no propagation. Most of these are sexually mature. Uh, so they really, if they do spawn, um, we could potentially get coral that way, but there's no fragging of these corals. What if a coral suffers and you need to frag it to save it? Uh, amputations are allowed. Amputations. In, in the case of trying to keep them healthy and maintain um, the survival of the main coral. Do you want to point out some of the corals? Uh, yeah, sure. Why don't you come on in? Um, so this is a Mycetophilia lamarckiana. Um, here we have a, let's see. Oh God, my brain is dead. I'm sorry. I'll help you out. This is a oh. Montastria cavernosa. So this is a moon coral that has more, as many colors as lords. We've got some um, madrasas up there. Looks kind of like a um, parites, but it's actually more closely related to Stylophora and Pocillophora. That's why it's got those super long polyps. Not super colorful, we'll get yellow. I think it's called pencil coral. Like yellow, yellow pencil. Yeah. yeah, yellow pencil coral. And it's the pseudo deploria. Uh, no, that's a... Uh, uh, Is that a sad copophilia? Yeah, it's copophilia. Oh yeah, see it says CNAT, this guy. Definitely he's gonna need some help. He's like light bleached, not hardcore yeah. bleached. He can come back. Pretty uh, much everybody could potentially come back. This is a mycetophilia right here. This is a group of corals that uh, I call them the Caribbean chalice corals because they come in crazy colors and they have those fun ridges and that's bubbles on them. That's uh, uh, Mycetophilia Yeah, that's Elysiae. Cool. And then in the back we have an Orbisella fabulata. We got a Copophilia natons. Mm -hmm. Fun fact about that coral is that the porous, the, the skeleton is so porous that if you dried it out, it would actually float. And they can grow the size of a, a Volkswagen Beetle. I hope to never have a skeleton to test that out, <laughs> but should I? Yeah, that's a, that's a neat coral and it's actually an ancient lineage of coral. So it's not really related to anything, even it looks kind of brainy. Um, here's a really fun, happy colony of Montastra cavernosa. And, um, getting ready to sting. <laughs> getting ready to sting. This thing's uh, very happy. You can almost see like a little bit of the green mouse inside. And then here, why do you have these um, just kind of separate? Uh, 
honestly, everybody's um, not in their final home right now. We still have to take photographs of everything to document any damage from shipping to make sure that we're starting off knowing exactly where our coral are so we can better track any tissue recession or any issues as we move forward. Uh, so what we'll eventually do is be uh, setting our coral at different depths depending on their preferences for different lighting and different flow. Uh, and we have to make sure to keep these guys kind of separate from each other to make sure we don't have any unintentional casualties from neighbors. Yeah. I'm, you know, this is one that's like really grabbed my attention. Musa angulosa is, it's super rare, but it's like a branching donut coral. So individual polyps of this look just like a big uh, scalenia, uh, Marigantophilia from the Caribbean, from the Indo. And it's actually believed that Scalimia lacera, the only true Scalimia left, is a solitary polyp of Musa angulosa. There's some uh, uh, disagreements about what that is. But I've seen these in red and orange, and it's just like a giant, giant polyp lobo, you know, for the, oh, really? for, for, wow. for the reefers out there. Those are actually small. Those are actually small heads. Oh yeah, and all of this will, uh, were to be given time out and the oceans get much larger. They had kind of a limited area where they could be pulling coral from because they really did have to get pretty far ahead of the disease zone to make sure that they weren't accidentally getting disease coral. Um, and the hope is that these will one day have those nice huge heads when they're back out on the reef. Yeah, I didn't mean just the fleshiness, but I guess I've seen a Musa angulosa that that would have been three heads. Like the each oh, yeah. each core lights like just super thick it's around. Really huge. Yeah. Super tired from unboxing all these corals yesterday. It is such a rare, an actually rare treat to see Caribbean corals in an aquarium and then see them in an aquarium in Colorado. But Sarah, she, I met her at Reefstock. We meet up at Reefstock um, every year. That's happening in a few weeks. Go to reefstock.show for more information. Um, but over the next few weeks, uh, hopefully we can collaborate together, get this tank really, really dialed in, actually aquascape the corals a little bit and uh, just see how these corals can bounce back. Great, so look forward to it. Thanks for time, Sarah. I'll see you at Reef Summit. See you at Reef Summit. Bye, guys.